That was crazy. Like sometimes when you press the record button, if you like, for whatever reason, like I try and be delicate when I uh, touch it, but sometimes I like press it, but then like for whatever reason I press it again, and then like nothing happens. But uh, thankfully, we're all good. It was um, but yeah, no, nothing happened. So uh, good morning, happy Monday, and um. We have a new One Piece manga chapter this week. But before we get into that, uh, gotta do my little Mahai Act of Kindness. Um, I mean, just like I said yesterday, my low is the fact that this was such a great weekend and it's over. But you know what? As sad as I am that it's over, that just proves how great of a weekend it was. It was great. Especially when um, uh, we had company visit that I really haven't seen in years. Like at least five years. So the fact that I was able to see them again alone, like that made my day for sure. I mean, don't get me wrong, I saw my, I saw, um, I mean, I mean, there was my brother, my sister-in-law, my nephews too, and they were part of my high. But, you know, again, these are people I haven't seen in at least five years. Personally, I think I haven't seen them since my brother's wedding eight years ago. But he insisted it was five years, and I believe him. But the point is, it's been a really long time. So the fact that I was able to see these people again was nothing short of a real treat, and that was awesome. And my act of kindness, and I will admit, this was kind of a dumb idea for me to do, but then again, we were already running late getting home, so it had to be done. But um, as everybody was starting to say goodbye, and I was able to say goodbye to everyone, you know, before we all had to leave. So before, um, so before everybody left, I quickly, because what happened was, we were out in the boat, like, tubing and skiing for a good, probably hour and a half. And by this point, it was, you know, 7.20 at night. So, needless to say, that was, that was actually part of my low, is um, the fact that it was kind of a late night for me. Point is, um, you know, we were on the boat for an hour, an hour and a half, and... You know, after we were all done, we still had to put cushions on the outdoor patio furniture away, still had to vacuum, still had to put the kids' toys away. There was a lot to get done. So I frantically did all I could to make it all happen. That was my act of kindness. So uh, I did a lot. And, um, yeah, it was just a great, um, this is a great weekend overall. And by the way, yes, I know there was another episode of Hot Ones that just came out recently. I'll do that tomorrow. Simply because, I mean, I actually had my notes ready and I was going to do it on Saturday. But the fact that Trigger Conroy is back, I had to take precedence. And then yesterday there was the party I went to the night before. I had to talk about that. And today we have a One Piece Mago chapter. So let's get into it. But for sure tomorrow I'll get to that one piece up, the one, one piece, hot ones episode. Because the guest is actually someone very, very, very special. Um, let's see. Gotta open up the file. Or not file, but you know. Okay. Sadly, we have breaks, however, I make this count. One Piece, Chapter 1124, Close Friend. All oh, right, it's Big News Morgan. Yeah, I love Big News Morgan. Like, one of the people I watch online is um, Liam from the Grand Line Review. Shout out to the Grand Line Review. And shout out to the New World Review, too. Which reminds me, congratulations to all you Hunter Hunter fans on a new Hunter Hunter manga chapters coming out. That's cool. Anyway, um, so, 
anyway, um, Liam from the Grand Line Review says that you can make the case that Big News Morgans is the most powerful person in One Piece. Quite simply because of his um, ruling over all of the media, specifically, um, you know, news cues and newspaper and stuff. So it's always a real, it's always a real treat to see him. And because, you know, he's in a blip the entire time, if the world floods, he's perfectly safe. Okay, so, um, okay, so long story short, Big News Morgans wants to print a story, which would include, you know, what happened with Luffy on Egghead. Basically, he wants to say that Luffy's the one who killed Vegapunk, which obviously isn't true. But, you know, you gotta tell a good story. He was also, ooh, he's also going to talk about, um, uh, Kid and Law's losses to, um, Shanks and Blackbeard, respectively. But VD, but VD tells him the hell no you're not. So, that's really cool. He doesn't actually, she doesn't actually do the finger wave, but twice. I'm, I'm, I'm simplifying what she's doing. Okay, back to Egghead. All right, hey, since tomorrow's alive. And it looks as if he's brought a bag and a barrel. I presume that's probably food and water for wherever he's going to go. Okay. Someone's calling from Egghead. Oh, Kizaru's up. Okay. Oh, Sakazuki's up. Okay. Ooh, okay. So, um, here's the thing. Usually, admirals like to refer to each other by their admiral names. Like, uh, Akainu is Sakazu oh, Sakazuki is Akainu, which means red dog. Kizaru, uh, Borsalino is uh, Kizaru, which means yellow monkey. But they're just straight up going for their actual names here. Which, um, that's actually kind of a neat touch. Okay, Kizaru's the only one standing, everybody else is asleep and. Foamy at the mouth, although in the anime they're not going to show that. Yeah, whenever a conqueror's hockey is used, in the manga they'll show people straight up foaming at the mouth. That's how powerful it is. Um, in the anime they just simply show them getting knocked out. Which technically is perfectly effective, but if they make the new One Piece, if they make the new The One Piece adaptation, I'd like to see what they do about Conqueror's Hockey. That'd be interesting. Okay. They, um, okay, they're talking. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I love this. Uh, Sakazuki's like, you better not have done a sloppy job on this one, Borsalino. And then Sakazuki's like, Tell me something. Have you ever killed a close friend? And that shows a flashback of, you know, Kizaru and Vegapunk meeting. And obviously it shows the moment where, um, uh, Borsalino kills Vegapunk. Ooh. Okay, Borsalino is really giving Sakazuki the what for. He says, you want to know if I did a sloppy job, Sakazuki? If you have time to sit there and doubt me, then come over here see my, and see my work for yourself, you ungrateful brat. Oh my gosh. Then Sakazuki says, I'm sorry, brother. I mean, here's the thing. Any One Piece fan will probably tell you that each and every Admiral has their own sense of justice. For Sakazuki, it's thorough. Well, they say absolute justice, but specifically it's thorough justice. Like, if Sakazuki does something, he is thoroughly certain it is for the greater good. Borsalino is unclear justice. Meaning, if he does something for the greater good, he hopes it's for the greater good. But that's unclear. Very big difference. Yet and still, they all have enough respect for each other. That's cool. Okay, the giant ship. Okay. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, Lilith's away. Cool. Oh my gosh. Except for Zoro, Frankie, and Jime. What? <coughs> They're all on the giant ship. Everybody else is on the, the three guys I just mentioned are on a thousand sunny. And. It looks like everybody is just downtrodden. Because the one goal they had to do, they technically didn't do. They didn't say Vegapunk. <laughs> okay, so... Obviously, if any One Piece fan would tell you it's no secret, Luffy likes to eat. A lot of food, obviously. And they do that thing because he's made of rubber, he gets comically fat and stuff like that. Um, Chopper says Luffy's in really bad shape. He's so depressed, he's only eaten five bunches of grapes. And these are giant grapes. Like, bare minimum, they're like the size of the ottoman that, I'm, that, that, that my feet are resting on. So five bunches of those. And Lil's reaction. So, yeah. This is a very important revelation. Because remember, Vegapunk made the satellites out of each different personalities, but they were all him. Lilith, funny enough, is the personality of evil. But with all the Vegapunks, with the exception of York and Gone, they're all technically still alive. Every single Vegapunk satellite that died, including Vegapunk himself, now rests within Lilith. It is possible that she's the new Vegapunk now. I bet if she really wants to, she could probably rebuild the others. That'd be kind of cool. So in a way, Luffy was able to keep his promise and get Vegapunk off the island. I mean, yeah, York is still alive. But that's not necessarily a bad thing. I would very much like to see where this goes. Okay, Luffy's up and down. This is awesome. All oh, right, they're having their feast. There's always a big feast at the end of the arc. Oh, that's so cool. And hey, this is technically Jinbei's first toast since joining the crew. This is awesome. Looks like they're all heading for Elba. We're finally in Elba. We are finally getting to the Giants. Ooh. It appears that there's a silhouetted figure. And all they're saying is, come on. Uh, I wonder who it is. Seriously, I wonder who it is. I don't know who the silhouette is. But I can't wait to see. Man, it's going to be a long two weeks, but the wait's going to be worth it for what happens next. Because we're finally getting to Albath. Yes. Okay. For those of you who don't know, Albath is a land. Well, Albath is the land of the giants. And it's been teased since Little Garden. And Little Garden was an arc that was released. Like, like 1999-2000. A long time ago. Like, honestly, there have been two places in the One Piece world that a lot of people have been waiting to see. The first was Wano. And boy, did Wano live up to the hype. The one place that we've wanted to see more than Wano was Elbath. And now we're finally going to get to go. Oh, man, I can't wait to see what happens next. I can't wait to see everybody's interactions. I can't wait to see where this goes. I mean, I wonder... I mean, listen, at some point, I definitely plan on um, uh, doing an our thoughts on Egghead like I used to do. But I'm going to wait just a little while longer. 
Partly because I really want to make sure I get everything in a row before talking about my overall thoughts on Egghead. And also, I actually want to make sure Egghead is officially over. Because, I mean, it's very possible that uh, the next chapter, we won't be heading towards Elbath. At least not yet. Because every, because after every arc, there's usually a chapter or so, a couple chapters, that talk about what's going on in the world of, in the world around them. You know, like uh, news being released and stuff like that. So I do plan on doing an arc thoughts on Egghead, and I'll get to doing that soon. But I'll have to wait just a little bit longer for it. But, yeah. This was, this is such a good chapter. And a very uplifting one, too. I mean, there's a chance that Robin is going to run into Jaguar D. Saw. I forgot to mention that in the chapter. Like, there's just so much to look forward to with Elbath. And keep in mind, this is the final saga. And we just got through what we got through with Egghead. From now on, the stakes are going to be just like this, if not higher. But I'll get to that when I talk about Egghead as an overall arc as a whole. I hope you like this video. If you like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow me on social media. As always, I'm very home in this video. For all the guys watching, enjoy for name. We have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Monday. Oh, did I do happy Monday? Happy Monday, folks. And remember, if any of you guys want to talk to me, always be here to let me know when you're back. Take care. Make good choices. 607 all day, baby.